In today's video, guys, I'm going to share with you an easy strategy that will get you way over 22 million damage on the Radiance Chief Challenge. Now, this is one of the toughest bosses out of all six of them, and he's kind of like a mirrored copy of the ancient battlefield dungeon, which, let's be honest, is a pretty challenging dungeon. Uh, we are going to use one legendary hero, guys. That's it. No more, no less. And I am talking about Ardred. Pretty much everyone that played in Season 2 was able to get uh, Ardred. Now, if we're quickly going to check the skills, this boss will basically uh, switch between forms. He's, he's going to bring the shield. He's going to bring the sword. Uh, he can gain buffs. He can remove buffs. He does tons of uh, nasty things. These are the requirements in terms of accuracy and resistance. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning the resistance is because he will stun one of your heroes. Now, you do have different options on how you can play this out. Either you're using the mythical set that will basically remove the stun, but it will slow down your ultimate energy. And I'll be honest, I don't like that at all. I feel like that's basically messing up your team. The main the main thing that you should do is build resistance on one hero. But I'm going to walk you through all that in a second. So he's going to put a defense up on himself or attack up. Uh, he's going to remove uh, buffs with the, with the ultimate and, of course, gain defense up. So this is the team that we're running right here, guys. We have Ardrat, we have uh, Taitlin, we have Hegio, we have uh, Elvis, and we have Dane. Now, the whole trick with it is that I have them built quite uh, differently to ensure that the team will survive all the way to the end. That's why I'm only using one support character, a healer, right? Which is, uh, of course, no one else but Ardrat. Uh, probably the majority of you guys got her in Season 2. If you engage with a guaranteed legendary event, she's absolutely amazing. So talking about builds and artifacts, this is what we are using. I do have uh, the Gatekeeper staff on Ardrat. I don't think it's necessarily uh, a must-have on her, to be honest. You can use a different one that will increase the healing. I like it that we are getting the skill haste from her. Then on Taitlin, we have the Witch's Remains to give us defense down. Emperor sets are very, very important. Emperor uh, gives you way more damage than any other set versus the Chaos Shadow bosses. Then we have, of course, uh, the Rivatrix Roots on... Uh, uh, Hegio, we have the Candle on Elvis, then we have the Slingshot on Dane. Now, this boss is on a 20 seconds cycle. Now, talking about skill timing, guys, Ardred has nothing. She can use her ultimate as often as possible. We're going to have Dane going at 16 seconds on a 20 second cycle. Everybody else will be on a 20 second cycle because that's how the boss moves as well. Now, you want to have Dane go before the damage dealers because he's going to put decreased attack on the boss, which will enhance your damage even more because you are using the Emperor sets. You have Taitlin to put the defense down first. Then you have Hegio. Elvis is going in before to buff somebody in the team. Usually it should be, it should be Hegio. It seems like my baby, guys, wants to join in here and kind of like give us more instructions on how we should actually fight this boss, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there isn't really a way on how we can make Hegio hide behind the boss or anything like that, because this boss will hit you with every single skill that he has, and it will cover pretty much the entire, uh, the entire area. Now, you can, of course, move uh, one of your range heroes to the back a little bit more, so Hegio can gain some extra defense from the puppeteer set that uh, we have on Ardrat. But considering that I have the Ravatrix roots on uh, him, is not needed whatsoever. He's going to survive without a problem. Now, the main thing in here, guys, is that you have Dane removing the increased attack from the boss. He will put the smaller version of the increased attack, which is not the craziest thing, but is still very, very helpful to decrease the attack on the boss and basically have the Emperor set deal even more damage. If he has increased attack, the Emperor will basically deal less damage so that's why i have the skill timing that uh, i have and yeah the damage goes pretty pretty well even if you don't have uh the witch's remains for example even if you don't have the gatekeeper staff and you're going to survive uh, less than i'm surviving you're still easily going to hit the 22 million damage with this team right here now alvis he's not even built for damage whatsoever he's actually on an ancestral protection set 
to ensure that everyone else in the team will survive without a problem. Because, how I mentioned, we're not going to have a massive shield. We're not going to have the big version of decrease attack. Uh, while Ardrech is amazing, she's not necessarily the most insane healer in a dragon, right? So we got to make sure we're kind of like creating the perfect balance. Alvis has resistance. That's why the stun is not here. How I mentioned, you can run, of course, the uh, mythical piece, the mythical chest piece that will basically remove the stun instantly, but will slow down your ultimate energy. I feel like that is a massive waste and a massive bait versus this boss because you're losing so much ultimate energy that your team is never in sync. You're never going to be able to put them spot on to ensure that everybody will uh, always uh, jump on the boss at the same time. And you could potentially delay it all the way to the end. He's going to gain his ultimate energy as well. The main thing why I wanted to get resistance on him and on my actual team that I have on my account is that it's so hard to get a good mythical chess piece with the right stats. So instead, I decided to uh, to just go with resistance. It's much easier, in my opinion, and um, it plays much better. Maybe not so important in this particular team right here, but if you're running a team with the big boy rally heroes, like if you have uh, Laurentil, you have Kuberg, you might have Filto, you might have Alton, and you're trying to put in a Rose as well for the decrease attack, for the defense down, the main issue that you will have there as well is that uh, you're constantly going to have to wait and they're recharging their ultimate energy way faster than, uh, than Rose will. So the defense down will not always be on uh, at the right moment. Now, with this as well, guys, the boss will put increased defense on himself. The main reason why you kind of like want to use the ultimates towards the end of the cycle before he's using the uh, ultimate like that, you're going to dodge the boss having um, increased defense, even though uh, you can always set Dane to remove it, you want to make sure Dane removes the increased attack and puts decreased attack before he's using the ultimate so he doesn't completely uh, destroy uh, uh, your team, you know? 24 million damage, and we still have 1 minute and 20 seconds left. So we still, uh, we're still going to be able to get quite a few, quite a few ultimates um, going in here so it's pretty pretty well over overall you know definitely not disappointed at all like look at alvis he's dealing less damage than ardred because he's just not built for damage i don't need him for damage hedgeo is gonna get the job done uh Caitlyn is gonna get the job done as well you know and alvis just in general he deals damage only with the battle skill and is what 200 percent attack now I would build uh, Alvis with attack if I would use, for example, uh, uh, the Pipe Orc legendary artifact to give more increased attack to range heroes. But again, it won't really benefit Hagio much. And si since he's the main damage dealer, I feel like uh, it's much easier to keep them alive like, uh, like this, you know. Over 30 million damage. Pretty straightforward. Pretty, pretty easy. And these are heroes that you will use, guys, every single season. I've been using them in every single season. Of course, Ardred, uh, she's only uh, uh, only in the game uh, since season two. But the rest of them, I've been running them every single season. And they're pretty, pretty badass. You know, they're really, really good. There you go. And we have, what's the final score? 34 million damage. They're not really in danger of, uh, of dying, honestly, because of uh, the way we set everything up. But just as an idea, it's still better to be safe than sorry. Probably I could use the attack aura instead of the defense one from Ardrat. Maybe. Maybe that would be, that would be a, a pretty good uh, thing. But look at the damage. Hagio alone has almost 20 million, guys. Dane has 4 million too. Uh, then you have, um, of course, Tatlin with 7.5. Definitely not... Uh, not too bad. Let me just quickly show you the build. Now, this is Ardred right here. She is on a puppeteer set. She has a mythical piece that has a chance to increase the healing. Total stats on her, we have uh, 60k HP. We have 5k defense. The rest doesn't really matter whatsoever. The more skill haste, the better, of course, because she's going to provide more, uh, more healing. This is Dane on an Emperor set. He has, uh, how I mentioned, the uh, Rascal Slingshot. And we have... 40k HP, 1.5k defense, 3.8k attack, more or less, 74 crit rate, 156 crit damage, 240 accuracy. 
This is Elvis and we have 66k HP, 2.8k defense. Nothing else matters on him except the resistance, which seems to be at 450. You don't really need that much. Uh, 350 resistance will do it just fine. And I have the candle on him with an ancestral protection set. Hagio on an emperor with the Revatrix roots. 52k HP, 1.4k defense, 4.4k attack, 99 crit rate, 186 free damage. And we have Taitlin with 46k HP, 1.3k defense, 3.3k attack, 95 crit, 133 crit damage, 270 accuracy. Again, skill haste doesn't really matter much on uh, him. But that is uh, one pretty straightforward team that can get you over 22 million damage in case if you are curious about the psychic core this is my psychic core right here nothing on the last tier and if you decided to go with the radiance fire you should probably already have something uh on uh, on them right here you know so uh definitely not an insane psychic core on my account is much much better let me just quickly show you what I used on my account. So on my account, guys, I actually used uh, Garius, Rose, Laurentil, Filto, and Huberg. I manualed the run with most of them to ensure that uh, they're uh, using the skills at the right time. I could have done it on uh, uh, ROS well with the timing, but I wanted to ensure that whenever I have a bit of a gap to use the ultimate on my rally heroes without the defense down, I'm going to just quickly jump on it and... Uh, and get the job done now in terms of a uh, uh, final result i could have done better with uh, better emperor sets but my emperor sets are really really bad on my account i'll take 76 million pretty pretty good with what i had so emperor sets on a uh, on a uh, pretty much uh, everyone except the two support heroes i have rose with resistance as well i'm not using the mythical piece that uh, can basically uh remove the stun right let me just put it like that and i am talking about this uh piece of gear right here this one so the weather is immune to a coming stun but each second of that stun's duration reduces the weather's ultimate energy by six percent so you're getting uh you're losing a lot of ultimate uh, energy that was all for the video hopefully you found this helpful if you did don't forget to smash the like subscribe to the channel much love and i'll catch you all in the next video peace